their real big time uh, came a couple of seasons ago when they went all the way to the county uh, senior football semi-final only to be beaten by uh, Nemo Rangers in a game that was played uh, down in Mallow that's the, I suppose the highest uh, peak that they've scaled in recent times they've fallen a long way since they were beaten by Ballon College in the opening round of this year's championship uh, looking at their lineup this evening there's a whole lot of O'Malan playing Donald O'Malan plays in the number 4 shirt Niall O'Malan plays in the number 7 shirt uh, it is Partick O'Malan playing in the number 15 shirt and beside him is uh, Tyg Diego County Senior hurling champ to first round and with 15 minutes of laps here it's even Stephen Duhalla 2 points uh, Musgrave 2 points uh, a tentative opening so a little between the sides before uh, Duhalla edged ahead on a further brown point of three in the fourth minute slowly Musgrave grabbed the whole of the game and opened the other count in the tenth minute from a well taken Dima Reardon point First half coverage of the Evening Echo County Senior Hurling Championship Cloyne and Black Rock Cork Sports Saturday on 103 FM with Cash and Carry Kitchens Tremor Road and Greenwood Furniture Centre Cove Cross This is Tim Corklin inviting you to join me on Sunday nights here on World 3 FM. Some silk styling range gives redemption to style sinners everywhere. Amen to Sun Silk Styling, a helping hand to style your hair. The County Senior Hurling Championship Live. Only on Cork's 103 FM. It's 8 o'clock. Time for us to go to carry 2. Now, first half action at the Evie Echo County Senior Hurling Championship. It's Cloyne and Black Rock. Once again, our commentary team of John Cashman and Finbar McCarthy. Perfectly bright evening here in Carry 2. Contrasting greatly with the weather we had last evening. Perfect evening for watching a game of hauling one late bit of team news from a Black Rock point of view. Fuggle Ryan with a dodgy hamstring is off. And Derek Gosnell replaces him. Otherwise, it's the team switch we gave you a taste of a little earlier on, but Ryan's absence is a blow. The positives from Blackrock, though, are the return of Alan Cummins at centre-back and the return from injury of Wayne Sherlock at right cornerback as well. Blackrock with a strong spine to the team. Cummins at centre-back, Colin and Tierney at midfield, Lee at centre-forward and Alan Brown at full-forward. Cloyne may ring a couple of changes, but what I hear, even though they've named a team pretty much in their conventional positions, a feeling or two that there's a, a, about to be a few positional changes uh, just before the start of the match here. They've their uh, regular soldiers still there, such as Morris Cal and Philip Cal and Killian Cronin at fullback, of course, and Declan Motherway in the left corner, and the likes of uh, young Paddy O'Sullivan and the Cusack in attack as well, along with the returning John Cotter. This is the scene then here in Carrie Tool and what has been built as the tie of the round, the match of the round in the evening echo, Cock County Cena Hulling Championship, Black Rock taking on Cloyne then uh, for the right to automatically go through to round three of the championship and avoid a clash with other CIT or UCC in round two of the championship and nobody in particular would fancy that particular assignment. Difficult opponents they would be. Your match referee this evening is from the Ballyhay Club. It's John Sexton. He's standing now. Cloyne will play with the wind in the first half. They'll play from right to left as the ball is thrown in. The watches are checked. The game is underway. Cloyne against Black Rock in the Cena Hulling Championship. And right away, a sideline to Black Rock. Far side of the field as we look across there. And Black Rock in the uh, familiar green and gold jerseys. Cloyne in their familiar black and red colours. The colours which clashed, of course, at the penultimate stage of this championship two seasons ago and what drama and what excitement we had there. It might have been a low-scoring match, but what a finale and what excitement we had at the end of that contest. What's in store this evening here in Carrick Tool in round one of the 2005 championship? Right away, we get in action with uh, Cloyne doing the defensive duties at the far side of the field. There's Morris Cahill there just trying to untangle himself from a web of a couple of players. Back he goes to his cornerback. Ono Sullivan, ball is stopped as it comes out by the Black Rock men, gone inside towards the full forward line, this is Sean Coakley trying to get on the ball trying to twist away from Declan Motherway Cloyne shutting tight there, Black Rock trying to get through Coakley battles back, big Alan Brown is there as well, ball has come to the big full forward here he is trying to get inside the Cloyne defence, a lot of work there but Lee Meany has picked the ball up, Meany has got the space and the point, first blow to Black Rock has come from Lee Meany the centre forward, the former Bishopstown man who of course seems to be Forever now wearing that number 11 shot for Black Rock. Hard work there of Alan Brown creating that opportunity. And the ball has gone over the bar. Nelly Totten this one for a moment on Finn, from Finn Barber. Killian Cronin takes a fast puck out. Received very quickly from uh, Donlo Cusick there. Alan Cummins back. First taste of action for him. Back in the championship scene. Cronin on the attack. This is Victor Cusick. 
Pulls it inside towards Connor Cusick. Blocked down there by the Black Rock cornerback John Brown there, who probably is starting at fullback. We'll just look around and see the way they're going. To Alan Cummins, who's definitely starting at centre back. Up towards Joe Young Country. Goes up with a hand, doesn't succeed in getting the ball. Barry Hennebury, but benefit from the breaking ball. The sprightly feed of Barry Hennebury. Gets away from Declan Mudway. Here's Hennebury for a second score. It should be from Hennebury, but it wasn't. Missed opportunity. We've seen him do that so often. That was a guilt edged opportunity. Before we go through the teams, early toss and back. Yeah, that was a bad wide, first of all, by um, Barry Henry. But interestingly, it's amazing how things happen. Blackrock will come back, Shane, Wayne Sherlock and Alan Cummins to the defence. And then they lose Fergal Ryan, who's been playing great hurling of late. And, you know, that, he's a loss because he's a great-hearted player for them. Um, interestingly, they're playing with... Great shot there. Who comes off the crossbar? From Conor Cusick. Came off the crossbar from Conor Cusick. Broke down to Stuart Barry, who just cleared his lines. That was a chance. A point scoring opportunity initially. And then a goal scoring opportunity. But it's clear to safety. It's gone out. It's a sideline to throw in far side of the field. Yeah, it is good, good effort by the, the full forward, Conor Cusick. Uh, many people have written Black Rock off, even though I, I kind of fancied trying to win this match. There's still a lot of experience and a lot of good players in that Black Rock team. They might have been around a long time, but they have a, Tom Cashman is at the helm this year, and they have a couple of. You know, Alan Cummins is back, and Sherlock will be fitter as the season goes on. Yes, David O'Sullivan, sideline caught all the way over the bar. It sails sweetly over the bar. That is a super sideline caught. It's a point apiece, and David O'Sullivan balancing out the score at the other end of the field. This is. The Blackrock goalkeeper, Frank Barry, just stepping away to his left and sending it straight up the middle. Who's contesting the ball? It's Joe Young going forward with Morris Carl. Centre back and centre forward. The man wearing number six is David O'Sullivan. Though he sends it down towards the younger brother, Paddy. It's gone out over the sideline, far side of the field. It's another sideline from around the same position. I wonder will we have the same taker? Will we have the same result? We wonder. Far side of the field, as we look, Cloyne lining up their options. They're going to wait for the Emerald Sullivan to come up and take this run. And what he done once, maybe he could do a second time. Blackrock, Frank Barry in goal, Wayne Sherlock, Stuart Barry, and John Brown, Chris Murphy, Alan Cummins and Derek Gosling. Now Adrian Colin and Paul Tierney, Barry Henry, Lee Meany and Joe Young, Brian O'Keefe, Alan Brown and Sean Coakley. Give you the Cloyne team in a moment, but we won't miss this opportunity for the Emerald Sullivan. Lining it up on the 45-meter line, teams of shares. Point each, four minutes gone here in this evening at Cork County Senior Holding Championship match here in Carrick Tool. An expectant crowd, a big crowd on a fine sunny Saturday evening, the last one in the month of May. And we haven't seen too many fine evenings, too many fine championship evenings. That's the first really big championship Saturday evening in the Holding scene. Dermot taking a lot of time, plenty of care. Slid around his way. Has he repeated a dose? It's gone high, it's gone wide on this occasion though, and it's right and wide. Cloyne with Donald Cusick in goal, Ona Sullivan, Killian Cron and Declan Motherway. And Mike Norton maybe, just looking at the way they're lining out, Morris Callan, Diamond Sullivan at midfield, uh, Donald Sullivan and John Cotter in attack. It's Ian Quinlan, Victor Cusick and Colm Sullivan inside this Paddy Sullivan. Philip Cal and Connor Cusick. Now at the other end of the field, it's Barry Henry. Cloyne switching their team around, trying to bring Lee Meany into the game. It's gone away from him. Ian Quinlan battles back. So too battling for Cloyne is Donald Sullivan. It's gone away to the Black Rock man. Fast side of the field is Paul Tierney with a chance, with an opportunity, with a point. Yes, point Black Rock. Second one of the game. They lead now by two points to one. After five minutes of play here, that's the second one. Interestingly, the fact that the Black Rock midfield partnership has been reunited and that's because of the return of Alan Cummins could be a key element in their championship season. Fast buck out all the way down to Paddy O'Sullivan battling there, far in the right corner ball out of the sideline, yet another throwing sideline down the same side of the field angle very very acute at this stage as Donald O'Sullivan maybe shots forward to take this one, they have plenty of exponents of the sideline cut and here's another one Troy just have switched their team their championship team around a little bit from last year their personnel pretty much the same John Cotter the only addition that wasn't there last year but they've rearranged a couple of players in different positions this side another great one try to slip it inside to Paddy O'Sullivan and Blackrock just trying to defend there and they've won a free out just the Blackrock defence what have they done Wayne Sher- Alan Cummins yeah. back there anchoring it Wayne Sherlock back there again good to see him back yeah they're playing John Brown right cornerback Stuart Parry is at full back and Chris Murphy is at left half back uh, Wayne Sherlock is right half Allen is centre half and uh, Derek Carson the substitute is at left half back it's still a solid look it's a very solid looking defence and they've made a quite a good start to this match and if they had Fergal Ryan in it you'd, you'd back him to, to contain any forward line Interesting then in this match, it hasn't really got going in terms of fire yet, but we've had a few scores. Now, two points to one, this is a free, this is Adrian Collin for Black Rock, who certainly knows how to score them from distance, from player, from the freeze. And his partnership with Tian, as we said already, really was the launching pad for so many scores for Black Rock in their championship winning season. We're in Charlotte, good to see him straightening out here, straightening up almost 
to halfway there to watch Adrian Collins strike this one sending the ball in against the wind but making maximum use of the opportunity third point to Blackrock they lead Cloyne by three points to one Cloyne against Blackrock then Cloyne maybe the more fancy team to win the championship Blackrock were quoted at seven to one but Cashman took a bet of two grand on Blackrock to win and they're now down to six to one I think that might be a decent bet this is Derek Gosnell slipping back to left half back to try and pick the ball up he'll be confronted by Ian Quinlan gave the ball away to Quinlan chance for Quinlan the number eight goes for goal or point it ricocheted off a Blackrock defender and it went behind of the Blackrock defender went behind should be a 65 but Ian Quinlan had goal on his mind as he went to strike it there I could see Frank Barry in the goal watching the landing place of the ball it flicked behind though off the back of a Blackrock defender it's a 65 to Cloyne yeah two mistakes there the first one by um, Derek Gosling too casual coming out of defence and the second one by Quinlan he should have popped it over the back I was very unlikely to get a goal from that distance but the 65 has been taken by Morris Cal and this should be a point now it's very good normally, Morris Cal, from this, this sort of range. Is he good on this occasion? Yes, is the answer. Three to Black Rock, two to Cloyne. Morris Cal with the fifth point in the match after seven and a half minutes of play. And Frank Barry, that was the type of shot that, well, that deflection could have taken the ball literally anywhere. It did take it behind for a 65, but it could really have taken the ball in any direction and maybe... Uh, could have sent the goalkeeper the wrong way as well. Here is the goalkeeper, Frank Barry, sending the ball up the field. Lee Meany and Morris Cal will be underneath it. Joe Young will be battling for it. It's picked up by, up by the uh, Troyan attack though. Running into midfield to try and pick it up is Mike Norton. He gets it. Down the left-hand side of the field to try and get Connor Cusick into the match. Alan Cummins went back to try and carry it. Philip Cal has now moved in from the wing forward position last year to full forward this year. Being challenged by Alan Cummins, being marked by Stuart Barry. Ball is pulled on first time by the Black Rock fullback. Where Sherlock trying to gather it up as well. It's a bit sloppy in there. A little bit of a wild pulled by Alan Cummins and there's going to be a free in and this a chance for Cloyne to draw a level terms and just like Morris Cal from distance other party of Sullivan and Irene Quinlan are pretty efficient at taking frees from this sort of range and it will be O'Sullivan, the younger, the number 13, Paddy O'Sullivan, who interestingly is spending quite a bit of time with Middleton CBS and the clock miners playing in the defensive role but here he's in very much an offensive role for Cloyne. From the left hand side of the field, 35 metres out from goal, never a doubt, 3 to Black Rock, 3 to Cloyne. Yeah, good enough start, John. We've had six scores. Interestingly, climbed over the breeze. Have yet to score from play, but they, they, you know they'll be happy enough. There's, there's a lot of um, experience on both sides, and there's a bit of teething out, teething out one another. But uh, Blackrock would be quite happy too. They're playing against the breeze, and they've got some nice scores. But it's lively enough so far. This is the Black Rock goalkeeper. This is Frank Barry, slightly to the right hand side of the field. Barry Hennebury country. That's the landing place behind the Mike Norton. Cloyne gobbled it up with John Carter. Went backwards to go forwards. Maybe took the wrong route. Declan Motherway tries to save the day back there for Cloyne. 50 metres out from goal. That was a bit sloppy from Cloyne. Down did the field it went. Alan Cummins tried to get on the ball. Against him was the strong presence of Victor Cusick. Now Cloyne gouging their forces away on the soul run. This near side of the field is the number 11, Colm O'Sullivan. He switches the ball over towards Philip Cal. He has Cal in the determined run inside to Paddy O'Sullivan. Oh, took it well, created the space. Is there a goal? There he is! Paddy O'Sullivan, goal, Porto Supreme. There was a slip of a goal and O'Sullivan saw it. The walk was done by Philip Cal on the edge of the square, but there was just one moment when O'Sullivan darted into the space, he would look up and he flashed the ball to the corner of the net, beyond the outstretched tolly, the left hand of Frank Barry, to the back of the net, Troy lead 1-3 three to 3 points, that was a great goal by the Troy corner forward, out the field, is sent by Frank Barry, to the left hand side of the field, uh, underneath it was Jim O'Sullivan trying to bat for this, got away from him, John Carter digging, trying to pick it up there, Troy have won a free as well, great goal though. Yeah, great goal John, um, bit of Cal's strength there, he's took took away the, the, the challenge from Stuart Barry and when the ball broke Sullivan picked it up and to be fair to him he had, you were correct in what you said he had nothing else on his mind and he really hit it hard and low into the corner great goal unlike the one in the first half which Teddy probably should have saved there was no hope Frankie Barry had no chance of that it was a great goal Fine with the wind at their backs it seemed to have eased and slackened a bit though since the start of the Middleton Douglas match around an hour and a half ago Free out on this occasion to a Cloyne. They lead by 1-3 three to 3 points. 10 of the 60 minutes gone here. David O'Sullivan landing it down. High, long, good, straight over the bar. Another point for Cloyne. They're beginning to find their feet here. They've rearranged their team a little bit from last year. Just in the attacking mold, really. The defensive shape is pretty much as it was last year. But John Cotter's return 
Dean Sim, Manning in at midfield, Coffer playing at midfield at the start of this match, certainly uh, with Don Lord Sullivan. So they've rearranged the midfield partnership. Ian Quinlan gone to left half forward, St. Philip Carl inside to the edge of the square. So far, so good from Troy. Ball gone to the other end of the field, Brad O'Keefe, maybe to try and get into the match for the first time. Ono Sullivan trying to cut out to the edge of there. Blackrock, the edge of the forward line. When the ball goes forward, here's a chance, racing in from the right hand side. Chance came in, shot comes in, and that is a 65, certainly came off the stick of the defender there from the shot of Brian O'Keefe and this is a chance and Adrian Collin uh, certainly makes maximum use of those opportunities most of the time dead straight in front of the post a bit of wind that has faced though as he tries to eat into a lead which at the moment stands at four points for throwing the lead one four to three points last year Cloyne and Black Rock share the Middleton pitch on the opening day of the championship with contrasting fortunes Cloyne getting past Glen Rovers in a tight match in the opening game and then the second game Killer pulling off a bit of a shock against Black Rock Black Rock subsequently recovered, of course, and defeated Douglas in round two and throwing well for their story, of course, finished up in the final when they lost in the first like Adrian Collin, 65, lobs in, but right and wide, missed opportunity from a man that has been Black Rock's leading scorer in their championship winning season on a few occasions. This time, missed the opportunity. Wayne Sherlock, unusual to see him around, out around the middle of the park, following Ian Quinlan about the place. We follow the ball. Alan Cummins is doing likewise. Colm O'Sullivan tried to bring the ball down. Cummins was with him. Ball went away from the two of them. Picked up this near side of the field and sent up the field by Sherlock towards Henry. Henry quickly switches the point of the play. Diagonally across to try and bring Coakley into the match. Call up by Diablo O'Sullivan. He just swivels and turns and strikes it down the right wing again. Coyne trying to get on the attack over there. Colm O'Sullivan trying to make waves there. He was making waves all right. Held up by Derek Gosnell, free into Cloyne again, and a chance to have a few free takers, but it looks like Paddy O'Sullivan is going to be the man to take the duties from near the goal, with Morris Cahill taking them from distance, certainly in Quinlan, and Paddy O'Sullivan will be very efficient in the free-taking duties. This is O'Sullivan, right hand side of the field, 46 metres out from goal. Cloyne leading Black Rock by 1.43 points, 20 metres in from the far sideline. Make that score as it was, he's missed the opportunity, Paddy O'Sullivan. Cloyne still with a four-point advantage after 13 minutes of play, here in Carrick Tool. The losers, as we said, play the losers of UCC, RCRT in round two of the championship. This is the Blackrock goalkeeper. This is Frank Barry, short and all. Wayne Sherlock contesting with Ian Quinlan. Quinlan won that ball, beating it down. This is John Brown racing out of the traps. He's playing at right cornerback. Being held up in his tracks, though, and being beat by Victor Cusick. Cusick on the ball, on the 40, firing it. Goal was that friend over the bar. That's a good point. Blackrock will be a bit disappointed that they lost possession, but Quinlan did well to win the ball from the puck out, and the score was taken well by Victor Cusick. Yeah, that, that's a John, John Brown being neither himself for losing possession there. You know, very good defender, normally reliable in these situations. But interestingly, John Black, uh, Klein has scored now one forward over play. That's their first point from play, but they've been the dominant team in the last uh, seven or eight minutes, and Blackhawk would nearly need to get a, getting a score. And the wind isn't that much of a factor as it was earlier on. Let's be honest, not a huge factor in the match now. This is Connor Cusick on the ball again. Cloyne moving well. This from distance by Cusick. Joel Keeper took it down. Luckily, there was no one in front of him. With office holding slightly, he recovered. There was no one rushing forward. Close enough to cause damage, but a scary moment in the defence there. Paul Tierney battles for that midfield. John Carter pulls the strong against the ball. Runs onto the breaking ball again. Picks it up. Inside in his left. He's going low rather than high inside to Philip Carroll and Stuart Barry. The Wally Cloyne man almost got the better of the Black Rock man. They'll need a bit of help there. Chris Murphy battling for it. Gets the ball away. Alan Cummins stands his ground. Gets in the right hand. Clears it up the right hand side of the field. There's Cloyne attack there. Mike Norton went for it. Lost out to Barry Henry. This is Henry from distance to try and bring Alan Brown into the match inside. Are taken down well in the Cloyne defence again. They're defending well. That's a good hand to Declan Motherway. And he's been a safe hand in the Cloyne defence for so many years. He's done it again. There's a free out and don't look to take it. Okay, so John, we we'll just break away there. It's uh, half time and Bantier in the evening echo County Senior Hurling Championship. We're going to go there live now. It's to Hallow and Muskery reporting. John Tarrant. Yes, Rory. Welcome back to Bantier for this evening echo. Go County Senior Hurling Championship first round. And at half time, it's uh, Muskery well ahead of Duhalla leading nine points to three. Uh, tentative opening saw a little between the sides before Duhalla edged ahead on a, on a Fergus for Brown point to three in the fourth minute slowly Musgrave grabbed the hold of the game and opened their account in the tenth minute from a well taken game at O'Riordan point Duhalla answered back with a Seamus Willen point put in a nip and tuck exchange as Musgrave answered with a second O'Riordan point for the sides to gather equality at two points apiece at the close of the opening quarter Musgrave gained confidence and uh, del- delivered on their potential on points to John Russell Financhi and, and O'Riordan the Mick Hawk, uh, Side combined uh, and continued to call the tune point to freeze to James Hughes and John Hurley sandwiched the Duhalla point to Donny Broderick and Mustry continued to dictate matters 
<laughs> don't do it. Necro shooting saw uh, the Mick Cork side a mass 12 wide before points to John Russell and O'Riordan helped the Muskery to a 9 points to a 3 interval of uh, advantage. So, Rory, it's uh, Muskery in the driving seat, leading to Holland 9 points to 3 for Cork Sports Head, uh, John Tarrant reporting from Bantier. Many thanks to John for that. Let's pop over to Porky Ring now as Glen Rovers and St. Catherine's reporting Jerry Walsh. We're on the quarter of Norma Kieran's Park. You're in Rory and St. Catherine's are in the lead here under the scoreline of four points for St. Catherine's. Glen Rovers just the one point. Damien Farrell drew first blood for St. Catherine's when he points from three and four minutes. And the evergreen Carl Casey landed a massive point from his own midfield area two minutes later also from play. In the 10th minute, Casey lost it over 65 to put the East Cox side three points clear. John Anderson opened in Rovers count in 12 minutes with a point from play. But this was cancelled a minute later from Michael Hegarty free. 15 minutes on the clock and... Glen Rovers will be worried they have seven wides coming at this stage to St. Catherine's too but the score after 15 minutes St. Catherine's four points Glen Rovers one point this is Jerry Walsh for Cox Sports Star the evening at Cork County Senior Hurling Championship in Parkyrin. Many thanks to Jerry for that. Before we go back to the lads in Carrick too, we're going to Carrick Gadruha this evening. Echo County Senior Football Championship clash between Dohanies and Clyder Rovers. Let's find out how this one is progressing by rejoining Michael Scanlon. Yes, indeed, Rory. 15 minutes gone into this particular tie here in Carrick Gadruha. It's been all Dohanies so far. They lead on a scoreline of four points to a no score. Pat Collins had their opening score after three minutes. Daniel O'Donovan made it two to nothing in the uh, tenth minute. Then we had uh, a chance for uh, Sean Farr in the... Uh, in the 13th minute from a 45 but uh, his effort went uh, wide but Michael Farr and Jordan McCarthy have both uh, got uh, points in the last uh, couple of minutes and it is uh, Donnie's totally in control playing very very well all over the field look to be the much hungrier side and the lead four points to Clyde's no score Michael Scanlon for uh, Cork Sport Saturday in Carrigan Drive Many thanks to Michael for that let's go back to Carry Tool back to John and Finbar Back here after a very contentious moment. We have another point on the board, 163 points, but we've just had an outbreak of what we don't like to see in a match. It looked like uh, Joe Young went to the ground rather dramatically. There was a bit of afters between Blackrock and uh, Cloyne players after that. The referee then stepped in. He was near, to be fair to him, to the initial incident. But a lot of the officials just ran on to check on the well-being of Joe Young. There's a bit of talking going on, a bit of debate going on, and the question that we're asking here at this stage in Carrie Tool is, will there be a bit of action taken by the referee? Joe Young is the Black Rock man involved. We're not really sure initially who that coin man was. Afterwards, there was a few players from each team pretty much got involved, and it's just panning itself out now and calming down. We don't like to see things like that in a match on back. No. No, we do not, John, in fairness. And uh, I, I, it, it seemed as if they Dermot and Joe Young, who were marking one another in a bit of a tete-a-tete with one another, it would be interesting to see. Joe Young is still on the ground. Dermot is up and about. The referee, John Sexton, a very, very experienced referee. The, the one thing that disappoints me you now is there's so many guys in the field when there's no need for them to be in there. Let the medics come in and deal whatever needs to be done. But there's, there's nine or ten people in there from both sides. And, you know, that, that's how these things can get out of hand and get, get involved with, with people when they shouldn't be in there. And this is where a bit more crowd control or d- discipline and parts of fellas on the line. I mean, just a quick count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's 10 or 11 fellas in there. There's no need. And that, that can cause a bit of trouble. Now, the referee, to be fair, he's handling it quite well. As I said, an experienced official. He's torn to two lines. And it will be interesting to see how he deals with it. Just to remind you of the score, lest we forget. Cloyne leading one six to three points and they're pretty much well in control this match playing with the advantage of the win but we say well in control that they certainly have been much the better team in the last 10 or 12 minutes of hauling after Black Rock started the contest quite brightly Joe Young is back on his feet there's now 20 minutes on the watch here in Carrick Tool still we wait for any decisive decision here Joe Young is back on his feet the referee is calling one of the Cloyne players back close to them at the moment he seems to have had a word with his linesman. Now he's looking at the back of one of the jerseys and there's still a couple of officials around the place but they are making themselves scarce at this stage. There's another one about to come into the field as well. As we look now, it's interesting to see what course of action is taken. Our vision of the referee is just slightly impeded by the Troyan player. There was a yellow card suddenly flashed there to old the Troyan man, Colm O'Sullivan. I think is the man that's got the, the yellow card there. Colm O'Sullivan is the man. Is, uh, is there any other action? Derek, Derek Gosnell. Derek Gosling and Colin O'Sullivan have got yellow cards and now he's speaking to both Joe Young and Damon O'Sullivan and I would imagine it'll be a similar colour. Yes, yellow and yellow so far. Referee is waving the rest of the players away. He just wants to talk to the two players particularly involved in this incident. It's after coming down. It's nice and quiet and almost silent here on Carrie Tool at the moment. Yes, yellow and yellow follows yellow and yellow. 
We will resume in the middle of the park. 20 minutes gone in the match. 163 points. Coin beaten finalists last year. Lead the 32 times champions. Blackrock at the moment by six points. Game on the way again. Will that ignite the fires again, we wonder? Sean Coakley getting on the ball. Being challenged and being put under a lot of pressure there by a strong Cloyne team. Colmore Sullivan back in defence. Tries to whip the ball down. There's Damon O'Sullivan overlapping down the right wing. Out near the sideline. Lost the ball. Blackrock battling back. But very close to the sideline. Very little space over there. Eric Gosnell over there, just a little bit back from the action there. Ball has gone out. Linesman's flag is there. It looks like advantage Blackrock right on the sideline here. 21 minutes gone, but we've had this period of inactivity which has lasted about three minutes at this stage. So, six points in the match. That's a nice way to describe it, inactivity. <laughs> well, inactivity in relation to the scoreboard. Let's get it right, OK, a bit of activity. But we'll gloss over it from that. It's a handy one to use in the report, inactivity. <laughs> no scores to report. Free the Blackrock. Adrian called it today. Get fast side of the field at the moment. Six points in the black in, in the match. Blackrock do need a score. Will they get one here? Ball landed inside. Alan Brown and Brian O'Keefe and the crew have seen very little of the ball in the last 10 or 12 minutes. It's got across the face of the post. Don't look. Cusick comes out. Denies O'Keefe the opportunity. Plays his corner back into the match. Declan Rodway. He stands very firm and sends a long clearance back down the field. Victor Cusick will try and contest it. Goes behind to Derek Gosnell. Arrowed over this near side of the field. Ian Quinlan saw the ball coming. Barry Hinnebury saw it. He lost the flight of it. Wayne Sherlock then picked it up in uncharted water. Sherlock with a non orthodox pass inside but it could be a good one towards Joe Young there's David O'Sullivan back again free on the Cloyne man free out to Cloyne so unusual to see Wayne Sherlock up there with such he tried to tread the pass through rather than going for the score yeah and he probably should have had a bet for off himself John even though they're playing against the wind and they haven't scored they haven't scored since the 7th minute and we're now into the the 23rd minute he should have had a shot himself instead no David Joe Young picked the ball off the ground and there's a sub here, number 18 for Blackrock is coming on, TJ Carlin, and Stuart Barry is going off. Yes, Stuart was under a bit of pressure there at, at full, ba- full back. The goal came off him and they put John Brown in full back. Yeah, TJ Collins has gone in now to play at right cornerback. Let's finish that. Said. John Brown is manning the ranks at fullback. Philip Cal has started quite brightly there for Cloyne. Ball is heading in that direction. Adrian Collins tries to deny Pro. Just gets the ball away at the sole run. Towards right to Barry Henry. 65 metres out from goal. Mega 50 now. Looks to try and bring Lee Meany to the match. Plays the ball diagonally over the head. But again, Meany just penalised there as the ball landed inside. He and Killian Croner together. Meany is on the edge of the square at this stage. Blackrock have got very little change of the Troyne defence and they're trying to switch and change and move about a little bit Brian O'Keefe is top of the right Meany is full forward Coakley is in the left corner on the left half forward position is now Alan Brown Joe Young is centre forward and Barry Henebury is on the right half forward position free out to Cloyne 23 of the Totty gone first half 163 points they lead by 6 Ball is sent back down the field by Morris Cal. Down towards Philip Cal. A party of Sullivan breaking away from him. Alan Cummins took the ball in inadvertently in the wrong direction. Uh, it'll come to Philip Cal. Cal goes for goal. Oh, what a save. Brilliant save by the goalkeeper. Fantastic reaction by Frank Barry. And that in Champions League week was Josie Dudek all over again. Point blank from Philip Cal. Magnificent save by Frank Barry. It's gone behind for a all over the barrel 65. The umpire says at 65. It happened so fast at such speed and at point blank range. Magnificent reaction to Philip Cal's shot. Oh, that was an absolutely brilliant save by Stuart Barry. He, his reactions were so good. And credit to Cal, the minute the ball broke, he whipped on it. And great shot. But an absolutely brilliant save. As good a save you see in any game. Save of the season so far, no question about it. Maybe the save of the year. This is the 65 from Maris Cal. Does he get a point? He does get a point. 1-7 to 3 points. But Philip Cal is causing problems in there. The Blackrock fullback line doesn't look that solid. They look a bit shaky. They look a bit bothered back there. And we're just looking now, in fact, that Sherlock, Wayne Sherlock has gone back to play at cornerback. And the sub TJ Collin is playing at right halfback. Alan Cummins is at centre back. Uh, Derek Gosnell is at left halfback. Chris Murphy is in the left corner. John Brown is now at fullback. The other changes in the Black Rock team. Five minutes to go to the break. They're 173 points behind the Rockies. Trying to manufacture something. Cloying again on the attack. Down towards Connor Cusick. Cusick getting the ball. Wayne Sherlock behind them. Back he gives it out to TJ Collin. This is the substitute. Has got the ball. Fires it up. Direct stuff by Black Rock. Killian Cronin. Very safe hand back there. Runs out to the edge of the... It's square to the left-hand side of the field. Gives it to Mike Norton. Norton back down the throat of the defence again. A question to be answered by John Brown against Philip Cal. Brown could steady the ship back there on the edge of the square. Has the ball. Two Cloyne men hold him up. Decision will be interesting. Gone behind for a 65. And, uh, John Brown did. So there's going to be a 65 for Cloyne. And they'll hope to make further progress with this one. And possibly Morris Cal to try and strike another one. He's already got one good point from distance. He's going for number two. And Cloyne at this stage winning maybe... 
much easier than people might have anticipated. They're winning by 173 points at the moment. New management team, of course, with Tom Cashman taking over. This is first championship match in charge. Alan Russell and Jim O'Brien and Mossy Duggan and John Murphy are there with him as we watch Morris Cal strike and score for Cloyne. The fans happy the Cloyne contingent. The black and red colours flying high here this evening. It's another one and Cloyne moving smoothly at the moment after 26 minutes of play. Morris Cal's point extends the Cloyne lead. They lead by 1-8 to 3 points. Could have been much worse. Only for Frank Barry's great save a couple of minutes ago. Ball is sent back up the far side of the field. Uh, Cloyne trying to manufacture something again. Courtesy of John Cottle there on the other side. And trying to get the show moving again. They have good movement down. Sent down towards the right corner. Defender's ball that should be picked up by Chris Murphy. He comes out, gathers it. Sends it up. Barry Hennebury contesting the ball with Mike Norton. Where's it gone? Came down. Sean Coakley might benefit from the dropping ball. Behind there is Donald Sullivan as well to try and get on the ball for Cloyne. Bit of space now and eventually a free for Cloyne. Free out. Nothing going right for Blackrock at the moment. Ball is cleared and there's going to be a free out. Yeah, 22 minutes gone in Park Earing, 6-5 to five for St. Catherine's. Again, claiming to win there in the first half. Klein well in control, John. Their defence are well in top. Killian Cronin is solid out at fullback. The Blackrock have now switched Alan Brown off and they've put Liam Meaney in there. They brought Alan Brown out. I think he's out on the way. He's out wing forward or something. But the Black Klein's defence is so good. They're very strong and they, they have an uncanny knack of finding their men. Long delivery down the throat of the defence again. Slipped behind it. Just went behind to the left-hand side of the field. And it's a puck out to Blackrock. Both these teams in their last championship match had a similar feed in that day. Lost in the piercing, of course. Black Rock in the semi-final by 3-10 to 1-10. And Cloyne just are coming to a very strong finish by the North Southers as they won the championship last October. Cloyne back door. Determined maybe to go one step better this year. Determined is John Cotter from the puck out. Nice, easy stuff. Back to Morris Carl down the left-hand side of the field to Philip, Philip Carl. Now with John Brown to contend with. That might be a more difficult proposition. Connor Cusick is there. And again, Wayne Sherlock tidying up. Up this side to TJ Carlin. Hit off the foot of Ian Quinlan. Bounce for two this day. Back to favour the Cloyne man, Victor Cusick. Started on the 40. Inside quickly to John Cotter. Cotter from 55 metres out from goal. Straight between the sticks and over the bar. It's moving very smoothly for Cloyne. They now lead by nine. They lead by one nine to three points and two minutes plus stoppage time for that period of inactivity to go to the break here. Cloyne will be happy with their first half performance. The coach this year, of course, officially is Donald Cusick. Tomas O'Brien, Carl Cronin, Denny O'Shea and Keon O'Shea there in the backroom team with the cock cool barra. Joe Young battles for it on the 40 as the ball was poked over. It'll be a clash ball, I would imagine. John Sexton about to throw on the ball. But the Black Rock forward line have been pretty much starved inside. No ball inside to the inside trio after the first five or six minutes of this match. And it's not going to get there, I don't know, because this is Mike Norton back there. Alan Cummins is there at centre-back. And his first championship back from his time in Australia. Up to Lee Meaney, who's bringing Killian Cronin out from goal to the top of the right position. The toy man looked to be holding the Black Rock man. He wants the referee. There's going to be a free in right in the corner. Meaney decided to take Cronin for a run. And it's going to be a free. And then Blackrock desperately need a score. And they're calling on Adrian Collin to try and salvage a couple of points and a bit of respectability on the scoreboard before halftime. Blackrock with the wind in the second half. But it's a dying wind here in County Tool. It was much fresher, much livelier at the start of the match, at the start of the evening here. Blackrock with this opportunity for only their fourth point of the evening. They're trailed by 1-9 to 3 points. You're on the Saturday evening sports special, 103 from the county, 102.6 in the city. Bringing you the story of this Saturday evening in Championship Hauling Action. Colin from an acute angle lands the ball in, but wide of the upright. Another wide, another disappointment, and another bit of a downer for Blackrock towards halftime. They really haven't performed well in this first half. Up to the standards, Tom Cashman has been hoping. Alan Cummins pulls on the ball. It comes off a throwing player. Again, it's been chased into the corner by Victor Hughes. Like a lot of pressure being applied. That's their game, the pressure game, and they've won a sideline as well. The walk rate of throwing certainly at the moment is very evident. They're chasing, they're harassing, they're putting pressure on the Black Rock players. No time in the ball for the Rockies. And as a result, there's mistakes being made, particularly in the Black Rock defense, and it's alerting throwing to scoring chances which they're taking. 1-9 to 3, that's the score on the board. Sideline to throwing. Ian Quinlan, this near side of the field, just outside the 13 meter line. Cloyne attacking the goal to our left. That's the goal towards Middleton if you want geographical instructions. Connor Cusick has got the ball. Breaking in inside. Referee said a bit of a pull across him. So there's going to be a free into Cloyne. And this should be a point from close range again for the Cloyne men. The cushion at the moment stands at nine. After 30 minutes plus a couple of seconds of stoppage time here. And this evening, Echo Cock County Senior Hulling Championship match here in Carrick Tool. Cloyne beat Middleton five goals and five points to eight points last year having uh, advanced after that game in Middleton initially when they got through narrowly against Glen Rovers and their 
moving smoothly here this evening thanks to another point by Paddy O'Sullivan interesting BlackRock after losing that match in Middleton they went on to defeat Douglas and then they scored 5-21 against Musgrave before drawing with Lynn Rovers in the quarterfinal of the championship then winning the replay and then eventually losing to Napier Street so it was a bit of an up and down season last year for the 32 times champions of the county they lead the Royal of Honor still by 7 from St. Fendaz and Lynn Rovers for the proud record right now they're trailing the scoreboard here 110 to 3 points the scoreboard against them and Cloyne looking good in this first half Blackrock attacking Cloyne defending their ball has gone up again another fall being committed by Lee Meany this time on Killian Cron and there's going to be a free out to Cloyne and the last few seconds of this half which it looks like we're heading towards now could be spent again with the ball in the defence here and I look at the Cloyne selectors beneath me here and they'll be happy I can see Carl Cron in there and down there, he'll be happy with what he's seen in this first half here. It's been a good, solid, workmanlike, organised performance by Troy. And there might be more to come later on in this first half. The long free by Diamond O'Sullivan. Blackrock man comes out to try and meet it. That's Wayne Sherlock ran out to the ball. Blackrock needs to see more of that, more of that determination. Battered down again by O'Sullivan from the three on south of the field. Picked up by John Cotter on the right wing, trying to get the ball. Has lost out there, very close to the sideline, fast side of the field. Again, the space is at a premium there. That's pure work rate. The ball has gone away, and Troy won that purely because they changed and harried and they walked and they tried to get the ball inside to Philip Kyle and it's gone away and Paul Yosselman might get it and Kyle has it can he send it across the face of the goal oh there was a man waiting for it but John Brown interfered there it was coming to Connor Cusick but that again was all about the walk rate of Cloyne out the field and they'll do it again Black Rocket did ring and dodging did ring and dodging Cloyne more direct faster snappier Declan Motherway at right half back for the moment down towards Connor Cusick at the edge of the square goes up with a big hand and a big collie breaks inside Philip Cal pokes the ball back to Cusick to kick the ball over rather than under goal scoring opportunity premium rate for Connor Cusick how did he put it over because it was easier to put it under but he did it's a score for Troy but they're just too physical Finvar really for Black Rock at the moment they're too strong legally they're too strong and too physical and they're also a lot sharper John you know, an illustration there both John Brown and Wayne Sherlock went down to get the ball a couple of minutes ago both guys you back your house and to pick it up they didn't a couple of seconds later the ball over on the far side neat little flick by Connor Cusick ball gone away up the field they're sharper and their touch is a lot lot better than Black Rock and even great flick there over Philip Philip Cahill uh, found Cusick. He lost his hurley trying to break through, and if he had his hurley, we could be saying goodnight, Irene, because he'd probably have got a goal. But, uh, you know, one, we were saying at half time in the last match, it was 110 to 4 points. It's 111 to 3 points here now, and we're all, you know, we didn't expect it to be this we didn't expect the uh, client to be so far ahead even allowing for the breeze Black Rock haven't scored since the seventh minute and in that time client have notched down one goal in ten points you know that's great scoring in any man's language they've, been, they've come from play they've come from 65 and were it not for Stuart Barry's outstanding save they would be much further ahead Those. the evening echo county senior hurling championship it's Cloyne and Black Rock once again John Cashman and Finbar McCarthy Yes, welcome back here to uh, Carry Two with Robbie. Just reflecting, you said quarter to nine. I looked at the clock last night around ten to nine and said, I wonder tomorrow evening in Carry Two will the weather be as bad as this? Well, thankfully it's not. It's a lovely bright evening, but it's proving to be a dark enough evening, Finbar, for Blackrock. I'm looking out there. They didn't go in at half time. They seem to have called already stripped for action. They need to do something different. They do, John. They're really in big trouble. I mean, as they're what? They're 11 points down. The wind is not that strong, as you were alluding to during your commentary there. It is strong enough, but their, their forwards are making no headway against a fairly resolute and solid um, client defence who are playing very well as a unit, finding them in. In fact, so much so, Don Logue hasn't had a shot to save. Grant, you know, granted um, they're playing against the breeze, but certainly Klein are in control. And it, it, it's a mirror image of the first match. If the Harker to make any shape, they need to score fairly quickly. And hopefully they won't do a Douglas and wait until the last minute to get a couple of scores. A couple of the Klein switches, which maybe we always expected changes, but a couple of them have really turned up trumps. We didn't see Philip Carl playing at full forward last year, but he looked very good in there. Yeah, well, I suppose, to be fair to Philip Cal, I mean, Philip has been playing hurling a long, long time, and, you know, the legs are not what they used to be, and his experience in around the square would, would be a big asset, and he proved that. I mean, he helped create the first goal, and he, he flicked up a ball that Conor Cusick could have got the second goal. So, you know, th th there's nothing, you can't buy the type of experience that um, that Philip Cal has has. In, in, gathered over the years and you know bear in mind that he's playing up against a strong a fairly solid well inexperienced defence and you know he's matching that and creating chances for the younger guys around him Cloyden about to resume with their new look midfield partnership of Donald Sullivan and Michael Norton Blackrock as we listen about it John Sexton as we come up uh, towards 10 to 9 here on a Saturday evening you're on a championship Saturday evening 103 from the county 102.6 in the city Claudia Blackrock the second half is underway Blackrock attacking the goal to our right 
It's Cloyne again with a strong presence of Victor Cusick who win the ball at midfield. Derek Gosnell whips the ball down. Won by Damon O'Sullivan. Fast dispatch inside. Gone into the corner towards Connor Cusick. This could finish the match. It surely has finished the match. Connor Cusick busting in at speed and pace on the left corner for position. And he walloped the ball to the back of the net. He really is a man for the big occasion. A man that had goal written all over his name last year in the championship. Couldn't stop scoring goals. And he's done it again tonight. And Cloyne lead 2-11 to 3 points. Yeah, and the thing about that, yeah, John, apart from the finish, which was brilliant, and um, the, the pass from Diarmuid O'Sullivan, now Diarmuid has come in for a bit of stick in the first half of that incident, which was a great pass. It was perfectly flighted, and it made uh, Conor Cusick's task easier. One other thing about it, though, uh, Wayne Sherlock missed the ball, and, you know, it just goes to show his lack of match practice there, but great pass for O'Sullivan and a brilliant finish out of... Um, Conor Cusick so like, we needed a goal at the start of the second half but we didn't need it at that end well from a, from a spectator's point of view I must say no <laughs> 2 11 to 3 points do the sums 17 points to 3 and I was saying in the first match that the second match certainly won't be as one sided it is more one sided we've got a fair bet against this this is Cusick again on route to all goals Cloyne on overdrive ball has broken out yet another score yet another point and this time the stick of Philip Cal is the man that does the damage and he's enjoying his lease of life at full forward against John Brown and Conor Cusick certainly enjoying his stats of the second half against Wayne Sherlock who's just doing a little bit of stretching there at the far side of the field but it's been a disappointing evening so far for Black Rock will it get better will it get worse this is the goalkeeper Frank Barry who made that absolutely blinding save in the first half could have been much worse Paul Tierney has had a quiet match so far into the match now busting into the forward line inside the Barry Henry taken away from the touches of Colin O'Reilly by Damon O'Sullivan who backtracked very well sent it back up the field Brian O'Keefe or Alan Cummins I should say and the corner back there this is Alan Cummins gets the ball turns and strikes it down the field with the win that is back now too far on this occasion drifted left and wide and outside the post but Blackrock with an awful lot of work to do if they come back into this match and if they're to fashion really any sort of a shape or any type of a challenge in the closing stages of this match what can they do? This is the throwing goalkeeper Donald Cusack, will it be fast and slow, short and quick or we wonder where will it go, short and long fast or slow, where will it go? This time he tries to direct it again, the load trajectory flighted over there towards Ian Quinlan, beaten there by Joe Young Young with the shot to send it back in, second wide though Donald Cusack gave a, a long look out and a, quite a, a vocal suggestion out towards the man that he sent the ball out towards on that occasion <laughs> feeling maybe that that ball should have been gone out the other way rather than back in at him well to be fair to Donald Cusack a lot of people get be, he comes in for the criticism for these sharp pockets but that ball was measured straight into Ian Quinlan's hand and he should have held it and that's why he's annoyed it could have been a point and fellas really given about Cusack but Quinlan should have held the ball here's Joe Young on the attack for Blackrock Charlton Brown who's had a very quiet match beaten this time by Killian Cronin just treads the ball out a couple of yards to midfield to Mike Norton challenged by Joe Young lost the ball Killian Cronin came back again oh he's a big strong player got a bit of a whip as he went through as well and the referee says advantage throwing free out to the black and red and Diamond O'Sullivan to take it they really look a powerful unit right around the field very strong very forceful and at the moment certainly outfoxing outwitting outplaying and outbattling Blackrock in all facets of the play on the scoreboard you're hearing us correctly it is Cloyne 2-12 Black Rock three points, eighteen points to three. Diablo Sullivan to take this one. In front of us, just on the chalk of the sideline, almost inside his own sixty five metre line. Lands a mighty delivery against the breeze inside around the house. Gathered and cleared out the field by the Black Rock defender, the right corner back at the left corner back, Chris Murphy. Back out the field. It's going to come back in again. Ian Quinlan on the ball. Referee this time awards the free against Troy and as a free out to Black Rock. They need to be hasty now. They need to move the ball quickly. They need to get the ball down the far side of the field. And they need to get scores on the board very, very quickly, this Black Rock team, unless they're heading down road, round two of the championship against CRT or UCC. This is the free by Carl and landed inside the house, in around the house, taken well. The sinking sun in the eyes of the goalkeeper, Donald Cusick, didn't distract him to Owen O'Sullivan. Away he gives it out to Mike Norton. Norton back there at wing back, just looks and a little bit of trickery there to give it to Donald O'Sullivan and off his left. O'Sullivan fronts up the far side of the field towards Victor Cusick. Close to the sideline, over the sideline, says the linesman there. Advantage Black Rock from the right half back position but they look at the moment a side just a bit dejected a side lacking a bit of direction and their big players not really coming up trumps here this evening so often 
We've seen the leaders on, on the big occasions, such as John Brown and, uh, and certainly further down the field, Alan Brown and the rest of the crew, but they look a bit dejected and a bit shell-shocked even as we look down on the bench there, just standing a bit motionless. Oh, no, Sullivan pulls on the ball up towards Ian Quinlan from that Black Rock sideline. Quinlan loses out the ball, is up in the air, gone down out to Brian O'Keefe. Is there something there in the lock of Brian O'Keefe? He's held up, there's a free to Black Rock. And talking about manufacturing points, they really need to manufacture goals and plenty of them. 2-12 to 3 points, the score against them, 25 minutes remaining in this match and this evening echo Cock County Cena Hulling Championship match live from Carrie Tool Blackrock losing at the semi-final stage last year on the Tuna Pearson but it was a game which could have gone a different direction many Blackrock fans thought the Tanta came on Wayne Schuller came off and suddenly the whole focus and the shape of the match seemed to have changed in the twinkling of an eye just before half time this is the free for Blackrock is it only their fourth point of the evening it is it was badly needed the stick of Adrian Colin landing it but what's in it for Blackrock at this stage is there a comeback they'll trail by 2-12 to 4 points they're a team that need inspiration from somewhere will they get it don't know Cusack and his crew in no mood on this occasion to concede Cusack taking time this time going to send the ball up the right wing as Troy attack the city goal in the second half Alan Cummins will go for it he's beaten by the big hand there of Victor Cusick who brought the ball down was held by Alan Cummins a free into Troy and Paddy O'Sullivan will trot out from goal to try and immediately cancel out that point at the other end of the field scored there by Adrian Collin you pointed at the bench friend well, they're a bit motionless a bit in disbelief the Black Rock bench yeah I'd say they can't believe what happened John and I suppose lots of the people around here can't believe it either because it, it, it was expected to be a lot closer but all credit to Klein they played very well they're smart their hurling is good even the last couple of players there Cusick found the right corner back out to the wing back and the ball was cleared you know and Blackhawk got a point there from Adrian Collin so their first score since the 7th minute of the first half and we're into the 7th minute of the second half but that's been quickly cancelled out by Paddy Sullivan and maybe there's more to come from Troy as they try to gather their forces in the strong half back line they lose out this time to Joe Young though Joe Young sends the ball high Colin O'Reilly hasn't got a touch since it came on and he won't get this one either because it's dropped behind the body of Alan Brown as he tried to keep it in play as well and that was just a little bit over hit and nothing nothing is really going right for Black Rock here this evening you get nights when things don't go right and you get nights as Black Rock know so many glorious nights that everything they touch turns to gold and everything that they touch tons to a score but that's not happening this evening they trail and are well outplayed 2 to 13 to 4 points Don't know goes down the middle again Connor Cusick has been going well there it's gone down now towards the number 12 this is John Cotter soling away firing a point over the bar real quality again he's been going the direct route between Victor Cusick I should say and Alan Cummins Connor the goal scorer at the start of the second half the ball broke behind centre back and centre forward and John Cotter popped in from mid- midfield just sneaked away from his marker and landed the ball over the bar another point for Sloan there's stretching away at this stage the scoreboard seems to be registering one for Black Rock it should be going the other way it's all Bla- it's all coin here it's now St. Catherine's 9 points Glen Rover 6 points that's the latest from Porky Rin as the second half develops for Dennis Welch his first championship match in charge Tom Cashman here in his first championship match in charge I'm showing a bit of disbelief as to what Cloyne are doing to his charge as Paddy O'Sullivan pushed in the back another free in and another dead on point I would imagine for Cloyne who lead at the moment by 214 to 5 points against Black Rock yes you are hearing us correctly this is more one-sided than the opening fixture this evening and that's hard to imagine at this stage it's uh, 2.14 to 4 points in fact I'm told should be the score 2.14 to 4 that's 20 points to 4 and it's about to become 21 points to 4 as Klein line up this free from outside the semi circle and Paul Sullivan says thank you very much yet another one and the ground is silent here it's pretty much shell-shocked and it's almost coming to the time of the match that fans will be deciding it's almost time to slip away it is so one-sided here this is really disbelief that match the championship the game that was being built up as uh, the best in round one of the championship has come not to be so so one-sided unless unless Black Rock can do something like Douglas and do the ball a half hour earlier than Douglas did 2.15 to 4 points ball on the way towards the Black Rock goal again up goes Philip Cal inside there with John Brown this time the cock man gets the better of the experienced man gives it also to Derek Gosner picking the ball up at left half back inside he tries to tread the pass into midfield they need to go faster and more direct Adrian Collin gets it he goes faster more direct Colin O'Reilly and Alan Brown below Brian O'Keefe gets and does goal Lee Meany the back of the net they need it badly Lee Meany benefited from the dropping ball a goal for Black Rock 2.15 to 1.4 and Lee Meany on the goal trail inside ghosted in from centre forward and got the ball to the back of the net and the game needs 
another goal like that and maybe a couple more as well to make it a really exciting climax here we have 20 minutes of hulling left in this championship evening here in Cali Tool this double header Middleton two points winners against Douglas throwing at the moment leading the way against Blackrock leading comfortably and Victor Cusack wins another free again and Cloyne lead by 215 to 14 that's 21 points to 7 it's all one way traffic referee wants to he's going to change his mind in fact he's going to throw the ball in John Sexton going to throw the ball in but that goal is a, is a mini boost for Blackrock but they need to follow it now yeah for, for the game's sake they need to follow it Frank O'Brien or Klein there sitting alongside of us said we don't need no more goals at that end of the field he needs them at that end and you know it, like, it, it is it, it was a timely boost for Blackrock but they need a lot more because Klein are so far ahead of them in thought and in method it, it, it's hard to fathom but I suppose when we look at what Blackrock have achieved over the last number of years are they running out of petrol Sherlock to Young, down towards Calder Royal Country. Killian Cronin should take care of that challenge. He's got the ball, got to run the big full forward. Then it's gone to Ono Sullivan and he clears it up the left hand side of the field. Blackrock there and TJ Collin battling fast back there as well as Mike Norton. Trying on top and all there was in the field on the ground at the moment, but with the ball, ball has come away and eventually the referee has awarded another free to Troyan here. Certainly their work rate has been very, very high tonight. They've hunted and they've chased and they've walked and they've harried right from the first whistle this evening. And certainly their physical presence as well has been a major, major factor in this match. OK, John, we just pull away there for a few moments to uh, head back to uh, Carrie Gadroha to the evening Echo County Senior Football Championship clash. It's Stahanese and Clyder Rovers. Once again, Michael Scanlon. Yes, indeed, we're seven minutes into the uh, second half and just before you came across to us, if this was a boxing match, the referee would have counted try the Rovers out long ago, up to a few seconds ago. It was seven points to no score, but their number 10, uh, Fergal Dorgan, has saved their blushes. He's at long last uh, got a score after uh, 37, almost 38 minutes of fo- uh, football. It was five to nothing in favour of Donnie's at halftime. Pat Collins, Daniel O'Donovan, Michael Farr and Jordan McCarthy getting uh, four points for them inside the opening uh, 15 minutes then we had to wait until the uh, uh, wait for another 18 minutes before the next uh, score came that came three minutes into injury time when Mickey Farr made it five to nothing we had two early uh, second half points from John Collins and uh, Jared McCarthy before uh, Tyler Rovers got their opening score of the game and in fact Donnie's will get another score now because they've been just given given a free in front of the goal so at the moment it is seven to one in favour of the uh, men from Donnie's and in fact, in a couple of minutes, it will be 8-1 to one, uh, with uh, about an eight and a half minutes gone in the second half. Donnie's totally in cruise control. It looks at this stage as if there's no way back for Tyler Rovers. Michael Scanlon for Cork Sports Sunday at the Evening Echo. And if you'll just bear with me for a moment, we will in fact confirm that that point has in fact gone over the bar from Pat Collins. So coming up for nine minutes into the second half, Donnie's in cruise control. They lead on a scoreline of eight points to one. Many thanks to uh, Michael Scanlon for that. Let's go to uh, Porky Ring now. The Evening Echo Collie Senior Hurling Championship. It's Glen Rovers and St. Catharines once again. Jerry Walsh. When you left me at halftime, Rory, these two sides were locked at six points apiece level. Fifteen seconds into the second half, Michael Hegarty made amends for his errors in first half with a point from Clay for Catharines and followed up with a point from free in the second minute. A minute later, he stuck his third point in three minutes, also from free. On seven minutes, Kyle Casey stuck his third point of the evening from play, with John Anderson from a free responding for the Glen a minute later. And on ten minutes just before he came over, Michael Hegarty struck another Catherine's point from a free. The scoreline, which I should have given you, is 11 points in Catherine's, seven points in Rovers. We've 12 minutes gone in the second half. Jerry Welsh, of course, Cox Sports started at the evening of Cork County Senior Hurling Championship in Park Huron. OK, many thanks to uh, Jerry for that. Let's go back to uh, Carrie Tool and back to John and Finbar. Mark here as you rejoin us here in Carrie Tool and certainly uh, Blackrock here at the moment struggling to find any kind of rhythm. They still trail by 2.16 to 1-4 in this championship match. We played 14 of the 30 in the second half here. The game has had a few little cameos and a few little sideshows in the last few minutes there. There's been one or two incidents just behind the referee's back and he's just flashed the card there in the direction of Victor Cusick for one of those incidents. Free for in fact, the referee is still going to throw in the ball. Not a one to free to Blackrock. Battling for it there is John Cotter in there with Adrian Call and Ian Quinlan behind the two of them. This is 70 yards out as we look across from the goal that Blackrock are attempting valiantly to attack in the second half, but they're getting very little change off a resolute clawing backline. They've won a sideline now, Blackrock. Far side of the field, just inside the clawing half of the field here. In the second half of this evening, Echo Cock County Senior Hulling Championship match, a match which has failed at any level to live up to expectation. 
And that's really uh, no uh, disrespect to Sloan. They've been so much on top here. They've done their job to perfection, but Blackrock so far have been very disappointing. Tierney Tamini slips beyond him. Gone inside, picked up by Hennebury. Where's his pace? His quickness of feet. He's elusive talent. He's running now. He's striking the ball. He was challenged as he struck it. Referee will give the free. The challenge came as the ball was in the path. Of close range free outside the semicircle. Left hand side of the semicircle for Blackrock for a late challenge there, and that's a uh, little ticking there for Diamond O'Sullivan who holds his head in despair there for that late challenge but what will for uh, Don O'Sullivan back Don O'Sullivan let me get it right to Todd O'Sullivan Don O'Sullivan got that this is the Todd opportunity uh, the Todd time that Blackrock have threatened something in the last few minutes can they get something over they got one goal a bit out of the blue from Lee Minida, they need to get something here. Floyd will have half the parish back to guard the goal over the budget. What can Blackrock do? They need to go for goal and find the elusive way through the next couple of minutes. Certainly, it's Adrian Collin giving the responsibility. There's a, just a, a little bit of a side show there between Adrian Collin and a couple of the Floyd players as to where the ball should be placed. The referee now telling everybody, get out of my way. It's not a penalty. But Floyd and don't know Cusack will be marshalling their forces there. Don Logan, five in the black and red jersey, along with him, Adrian Collin, to try and fire Black Rock a late, late lifeline in this match. 14 minutes remaining, 2.16 to 1.4. This second half is very checkered, very broken up. Collin goes for the juggler, and he's got it in and over the bar rather than under. He was looking far on the roof of the net, but it went high over the bar instead of just underneath the crossbar. 2.16 to 1.5, 22 points to 8. Cloyne lead this match by 14 points and there's a bit of traffic heading towards the exits in a couple of directions here this match has really been very checkered in the second half it's been relatively quiet we've had a few stoppages and we have no great flow or rhythm and we've no real sign that Blackrock are going to come back into the match trails them out they're on the attack again Meany who got the goal couldn't keep it in the hand on that occasion Cloyne trying to steal in there again with John Cotter to try and steal it away and the referee has given a free to Blackrock the case of lobbing in and hoping something maybe comes out of it because even though there's still about 13 or 14 minutes left in the match they definitely need goals and Adrian Collin will be probably given the instruction to try and land it in and hopefully somebody gets a touch the sun is sinking a little bit there he's going for the score in fact he's going to sail it over and he has missed it yeah there was a bit of indecision there John I would suggest I'd say he didn't know whether to lob it in or, or drive it in or go for the point it was unlikely he was going to get a goal he probably should have taken the point and just keep tipping away but uh, I think the Hawk would be very very disappointed with this display they've only got about two or three scores from playing uh, from playing total and they're, they've really been run ragged all over they've come a bit more into it now but that's probably down to the fact that Klein are relaxing slightly Adrian Collins sends it inside Killian Cronin answers the call rallies the troops runs the ball out this near side of the field the other side of back into the emergency right corner back gets the ball brings it inside on his left sends it up the field but it went off the holly the throwing man Victor Cusack out over the side OK, John, we'll break away again because it's all over in Bantir and Edie Deco County Senior Hurling Championship clash between uh, Johanno and Muskery. It has finished inside the last couple of seconds and there's been a big surprise. Let's go back, John Talent. Yes, Rory, Johanna have steered their way to a rare victory in the Amy Echo County Senior Hurling Championship, falling a narrow 111 to a 13 point victory over Muscree. When it mattered, Johanna offered the composure, tenacity, and calm commitment to snatch the spirals in a major second half turn around the fortunes. A tentative opening saw a little between the feet before Johanna edged ahead and a further strong point of free in the fourth minute. Johnny Muscree grabbed the hold of the game and opened their account in the tenth minute from a well taken deal of Raiden point. Dollar answered back with the uh, Seamus Whelan point, but in the nip and tuck exchanges, Mustry answered on a second or rhythm point for the size to gather equality at two points apiece at the close of the opening quarter. Mustry gained confidence and delivered on their potential with points to John Russell, Financhi, and Anna Rudin. The McCoxley combined continued to uh, call the tune, point to freeze to James Hurley uh, and um, and John Hurley, sandwiched the Duhala point to Donny Broderick. Mustry continued to dictate matters, though in accuracy shooting uh, uh, saw the McCoxley the mass 12 wide in the opening 30 minutes, so points to John Russell and Rudin helped the Mustry to a 9 points to a 3 interval advantage. Uh, Duhala restarted in encouraging fashion. Kevin McCarthy pointing is the made the bell for a spell with chances going at begging at either end assisted by the breeze to how to reduce the deficit on two Fergus Brown pointed frees. Mustry waited to the 44th minute to open their second half account on a John Hurley pointed free. The size exchange points to Brown and Hurley as Mustry held a 11 points to a 7 point grip entering the second into the last quarter. 
to highlight Titan Destro Brown pointing a free and in the 49th minute the game took a dramatic twist Anthony Nash's long range free landed in the zone and in a goal mode melee Mark Sheehy from Tullity scooped the ball into the net the tie matters a Brown uh, free Nudge Dohala ahead uh, and Mustry answered to um, uh, John Hurley place ball point again Brown edged the host division into the narrow lead uh, Mustry added rallied on a Dimitri Reardon point but Dohala had the bite between the teeth points to Brown and Dona Duane gained the grip on the scoreboard Mustry had the closing say with a Reardon point but it came too late to save the day victory for Dohala and progress into round two on a meeting against Calvary confirmation of this dramatic evening echo county scene of hurling championship first round scoreline Dohala 111 must be 13 points for Cox Sports Adder, John Tarrant reporting from Bantier Many thanks to John for that. Let's go back straight away to Curry 2. Let's back to John Cashman and Finbar McCarthy. Point for Cloyne at one end of the field, but a dismissal for Black Rock at the other. That's the story since you left us, Rory. Disappointing. A second bookable offence for Joe Young. A late challenge on Ian Quinlan. And that means the Black Rock wing forward was sent off. It's 217 to 15 here. 23 playing against the Cloyne in control. Morris Cal with a shredded hand pass through. Philip might come out and try and collect it. Might leave it running through to Victor Cusick. He's taken on the end. He's on the run. He's on the scoring sheet again. A point by Victor Cusick. 218 to 15. It's an impressive score for Floyd. They're certainly building it up last year. As we said, they hit a 5-5 against Middleton. Then they went on to defeat St. Fenbaz. And, of course, they went on to beat Newtown in the semi-final of the championship without uh, keeping it tight, keeping the work rate very, very very, very high, deceiving though. They've really opened up in the scoring stakes, throwing a very impressive two goals and 18 points. Brian Fleming is the man that has come on instead of Ono Sullivan on the Cloyne team. 18 to 1 5. Cloyne still hungry, still looking for scores. On the attack, as we look away to our right here, they've conjured up another free, one another free. Uh, Connor Cusick, the man that was held up as he marauded up the left wing there, and another chance for the Cloyne men to embellish what is already a very, very satisfying evening here in Carry 2. We are came here expecting maybe that Middleton might eclipse Douglas and win the opening match here. Douglas rallied really late to cut the gap down to just two points. We expected a real humdinger here in the second match, but it has never really happened in decibel level has never really risen here in Carry Tool this evening because this has been so, so one-sided and it's been so prolific by Cloyne and so disappointing by BlackRock at the risk of repetition though. Cloyne just adding on the points here, still eight minutes remaining. 218 on the board, 1-5 for BlackRock, make that 219, courtesy of Paddy O'Sullivan, 15 players for throwing, 14 off for BlackRock after the dismissal of Joe Young, but it is all one-way traffic here on Carrick Tool, and now the little trickle towards the exit, certainly the pace has increased and it's turning from a trickle to a steady flow in off and back, and it's understandable because this one is really done and dusted. Yeah, it's done and dusted, John, and the uh, yellow car there for Wayne Sherlock, it's a more frustration than anything else because things are not going his way and neither are they going his sides. We were saying of the four teams that played here this evening, you know, of all four, Blackhawk will come out of this with, with, the le- with the most amount of work to do and they'll, they'll take the least out of it because Douglas, for, for all the fact that they didn't play that well, they were only beaten by two points in the end and they battled away to the end. Blackhawk are now, what, 20, 25 points, the eight down, that's 17 points. Still a few minutes to go on down to 14 men. It's going to be very, very hard to pick this up and they must play again in two weeks' time. It's going to be a tough ask of their selectors and when you consider what they've achieved over the last number of years, you know they're a proud and traditional club. They'll certainly make the effort, but I just wonder will will it will they make any further progress in this championship? And they really need radical improvement. John Carter to Ian Quinlan, and they managed to send the ball up the left wing between them and Cloyne have won another free from a similar position from which Paddy O'Sullivan sent the last one over the bar. Cloyne man on the ground, just a slight little increase in the temperature in there as well. Referee John Sexton forced to just stand beneath uh, between a couple of players as well. Another free into Cloyne. It's 219 to 1-5 here in favour of last year's beaten finalists against the 32 times champions and Tom Cashman who took over the task from Timmy Ruffey who now of course is guiding the fortunes of Blarney in the Intermediate Championship Tom was involved of course as a selector and advisor and in various capacities to Black Rock along with his brother Jim when they won the championship on those three occasions between the end of the last decade and uh, the start of this new millennium. But right now, Black Rock, who are so used and so accustomed to inflicting heavy defeats on teams, are really suffering a big, big defeat themselves against a Cloyne team that have laid down a marker early on in this championship that they are determined maybe to really make a bold bid again this year in 2005 
for championship honours. A throwing team with very little alteration from last year. But, uh, and yes, John, I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but Wayne Sherlock is after being receiving his second yellow card now, and he's after being sent off. No, he's protesting. And I just, in fairness, now, I, I, he's protesting. He's, in his, he's gone over to the linesman. I think, I don't know who the linesman is on the far side, but he's after getting a second yellow card, and he's been sent off. So that's, that's a pretty disappointing return to action for Sherlock. Now, in terms of, it doesn't mean a whole lot in so far as he's not going to miss anything out of it. But from his own, uh, his, himself, he still, he, he, he really can't believe it. Because I think earlier the referee also showed a yellow card to John Brown. But this is the most disorganised and disjointed display I've ever seen from a rock rock team in a long, long time. And for to lose one player and now to lose a second the player of Wayne Sherlock, that, that's incredible stuff. Yeah, it's very strange, very, very strange. And throwing well, they'll, all they can do is take the chances that have been presented to them, and they have taken the chance with yet another point over the bar from Paul Sullivan. Oh. OK, John, we'll just break away yet again to go back to uh, Carrie Gadrahad to the Evening Echo Connie Senior Football Championship. It's the Honeys and Clyder Rovers. Once again, Michael Scanlon. Yes, indeed. Welcome back here to Carrie Gadrahad. Just under eight minutes to go, and the referee might as well blow this one up at this stage because it is 12 points to Donny. It's just a point to uh, Clyder Rovers. Uh, to uh, tried the Rovers first score of the game came seven minutes into the second half and such was Donny's response that they almost said what a cheek Kyle Rovers had to actually get a score because since then they've uh, got five points uh, five unanswered points Jordan McCarthy uh, in the eighth minute John Collins after eight and a half Michael O'Donovan kicked over in the ninth minute McCarthy again in the thirteenth minute and Daniel O'Donovan the big uh, full forward wearing the number fourteen shirt uh, kicked over in the uh, 14th minute now we've now moved on uh, 7 or 8 minutes since then it is done he's in total control they literally can do what they want uh, and they lead and they're certainly going to be true to the third round draw on Tuesday night at the moment it is 12 points to uh, 1 in favour of the South West men and the referee might as well blow it up now and leave us all go home and put Tyler Rovers out of their misery. Donnie's in, in cruise control. They lead 12 points to 1. Many thanks to Michael for that. Let's go to Porky Ring. Evening Echo Connie Senior Hurling Championship. Glen Rovers and St. Catherine's about five minutes to go in this one. Let's go back. Jerry Walsh. There are five minutes left in the clock in the clock royal from into six excitement here in Porky Ring. When you left me the last time, St. Catherine's joined a four points advantage over Glen Rovers. A scoreline of 11 points to 7. It's now just down to one point. St. Catherine's 12 points. Uh, Glen Rovers 11 points on 10 minutes. Michael Hegarty struck into the second half, struck back Catherine Street with a four points ahead. Two minutes later, John Anderson points to 21 for Glen Rovers, and on 15 minutes, he struck a great point from play. But the Mercury Carl Casey cancelled that immediately at the other end. On 17 minutes, Sean McGrath struck his second point of the day. Then on 20 minutes, John Anderson received a straight red for a reckless strike in Carl Casey. However, three minutes later, Patrick Harrigan reduced the gap to the minimum from a free. With four and a half minutes left, it's anyone's game. St. Catherine's 12 points, Ken Rovers 11 points. Jerry Walsh for Cox Sports Start at the Evening Echo Cox County Senior Hurling Championship in Park here in. Many thanks to Jerry for that. Let's go back to Carry Tool for the closing couple of minutes. Yeah, you've missed very little here in Carry Tool, Roy. This is Cloyd in free flow at the moment, 221 to 15 in Quinlan. Their latest score, Black Rock, can't get beyond the Cloyd half back line. That's the story of pretty much the whole of the second half. As the ball goes up again towards Michael Norton, having received from John Carter and Cloyne on their way again. They've created an awful lot of damage up the left wing in the second half. This is Don Sullivan accelerating up. Shot was blocked down initially. Back it goes again. They'll go shorter this time. Out the field towards Conor Cusick. He'll go across the face of the post. Derek Godson will run back. Goalkeeper will come out. Frank Barry. He made an absolutely wonderful save in the first time from Philip Cal. Let's not forget that. One of the saves of any season, I would imagine. Point blank save. Lee Meany bats underneath the dropping ball with a throwing substitute. Brian Fleming runs the ball into midfield. It's a, a bit crowded and a bit disorganized and a bit congested from somehow. Blackrock have manufactured to win a free on halfway as they attack here. The scores building up against him here. They've only scored 1-5 in this championship match. And when was the last time that that happened to Blackrock? And when probably was the last time that they conceded 221 in the championship match? Can they adjust the balance any bit later on? John Brown loves the ball in around the house. Ian Quenland, who got a point the last time he touched the ball at the other end of the field, is now back doing defensive duties. That epitomizes the throwing work rate. Lands the ball out over the sideline. It is a sideline to Blackrock out here. 
It's near side of the field, 65 metres out from goal. But there is an inevitable look about this match with the last 20 minutes. Derek Gosnell to take it between the 45 and the 65 metre line with one minute exactly remaining in this match. After two hours of falling, we're down to one minute. Sweet sideline caught by Gosnell. Into the left paw of Donal Cusick. Just took one step to his left and sent the ball out the field. Into open space. That never happens on Donal, but it has happened here. And it'll just tell you how relaxed this match is laid on. Out to Lee Meany who picks it up. There's only a training gallop at this stage. The pace has gone non-existent at this stage. Inside, picked up to Killian Cronin, giving it to Ian Quinlan. Again, players just dropping off one another. Quinlan dispatched it fast inside, taken very well by Podio Sullivan. And he was held there as he tried to get the ball away from Chris Muffin. There's another free into Floyd. Finbar, we won't be staying on long after this because there's not too much more that we can say that we haven't said already, but just wrapped the evening's events up in terms of Tony Blackrock. There's a, John, there's a whole, not a whole lot you can say except that the Hawk have a mighty job in their hands to try and pick this up. I mean, they've been beaten 221 to, f- to f- 158 five, points. They've only scored eight points, two points from in the second half. No, 222 to 15. They got two points in the second half, both from freeze and a goal from play. It's going to be a big job, and if Tom Cash can turn this around, he's some operator because I think even there, the last couple of seconds, the ball came out of defence, and I'm wrong, gave up the chase, the game was over, and I think it's going to be a huge effort. But first of all, whatever about Black Rock, this is a mighty performance by Klein. Very, very efficient, very few ways, one wide in the second half. They've used the ball well, they've created their chances, and there comes another one. And here goes Conor Cusick, the man with the golden touch, inside to Philip Cal. Goal or points, and then around the square. Saved inside by the goalkeeper, another chance, whipped in inside by Colm O'Sullivan, right and wide. We're over the 38 minute mark, and surely, 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 there's no need for too much additional time in this one. Lee Meany drifts out to the right hand side to try and gather the ball. The goalkeeper will go as long as he can. Frank Barry get that ball away. Mighty delivery way down the field. Colm O'Reilly goes up to try and bring it down to Alan Brown. Gone away from Brown, back comes Declan Mudway, picked up by Damon O'Sullivan. Time to steady to look around and to hear the final whistle sound. It's been a great night for Cloyne. They've won here. By 222 to 5 points, one of the most famous victories achieved by Cloyne in recent years. Very accomplished, very well uh, drilled from 1 to 15 all the way through. Great night for Cloyne, no doubt about the outcome. Difficult night though for Blackrock and a long way back. OK, many thanks there to John Cashman and Finbar McCarthy. Well done to Cloyne, well done to Middleton. Let's go back to Carrie Gadrod, the evening Echo County Senior Football Championship as Donnie's and Clyde Rovers. Once again, Michael Scanlon. Yes, indeed, it is equally as embarrassing here because at the moment...